Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Power Expertise. In today's video, we are going to see how we can get the string value out of the choice column in the dataverse. So one of my students has asked me about this requirement. So I thought of making a video so that it can be helpful for others as well. So let's get started. So what you need to do, you need to come to your make.powerautomate.com. You need to click on new flow and then go to automated cloud flow. And here you need to select a trigger when a new row is added or modified. So we'll select the trigger of a data verse. Okay. I just have to select add or edit based on your choice based on a requirement select the change type table name you just select i'll select the table name as my employees scope i will put it as organization level okay okay now this is done what what the next step will do will add or we initialize a variable of type in array. Okay. Choice and the type should be an array. And in this, what you will do, you will give all possible uh, choices that you have in your Dataverse table. So let's say, uh, have a choice called active. inactive draft or whatsoever okay so these are the choices this is a column that you have in your uh, data was table these are the possible choice of that column now what we will do in the next step we will add a select option action and what we will do we will select the range of this particular column that we have described in this initialize variable okay we will select a range that will start from zero and it will go to the length okay of your variable Select length and then give your variable name. So from your dynamic content, select your variable, what you have initialized and click on OK. So it will, this select will start from zero and it will end to your length of the variable. In our case, our length is only three. So it will start from zero and it will go to three. Now we will map the string value Okay, with the variable, select this variable, copy this, okay, now cut this and come to your expression box, okay, remove this and percent, and now from this, item by item, we will fetch out all these string values from this particular variable. So just question mark and just give item. So in your case, what are the changes? Only change will be whatever variable name that you have given in your while initializing your variable, whatever um, choices that you have in your uh, data was column, you need to specify here, rest all, whatever I am giving, just give as it is, okay? 
click on OK. Now we'll add the index position. Since we are dealing with array, so in array, you already know that you have index and the value. So this will be our value and this will be our index. This is how we will map. Okay. And here just specify as item. That's it. And click on OK. This is done. Now what will be our next step? We will filter it. Filter the select one by one. Now what you need to do, you need to add a filter array action. Okay. And here you need to get the output of the select. And then here you need to get one by one the item from this particular array. We have given the name as string value there by mapping it. So here we have given the string value, right? That we need to match it one by one, which is equals to the dynamic value of your status. You can give static as well, but it is never recommended to use any static value in your code or anywhere uh, in your automate as well. So we'll give, we'll select the dynamic value of status. Okay. But I mind you one more, one more thing here. The status is a choice column. If you give it like this, so a status will give you the uh, uh, the uh, code value, not the actual string value. So if you go, if you go here and we'll see the structure of this choice column in data was, it's a kind of key value pair. So label and value. So if you give directly status, it will match it with the numeric value, which we don't want. We want to match it with the string value, which we give, which we have given in the left hand side. So what we need to do, we just leave it as it is, save it. We'll run it one, one time so that we'll get what is the value for a choice that will give us a string. Okay. So what? What we're going to do, we'll run it one time just to get it. Just give a thousand select John Houston. It's not 23. Just leave it as it is. It is save and go back and we'll check. The last executed flow, which has executed 10 seconds ago. Now in the here, we show in raw outputs, search for status. See, status label you can use, which will give you the string value. Status code, again, it will give you the numeric value. So we will use this one. Uh, so yeah, edit it. We'll delete this as much required. This we have not accepted. So yeah, we'll delete this. When we filter it, we'll come back here. In the expression, just just copy one time and just copy this so that we will get the trigger body and all. Just remove at the rate. And from here, you need to specify the one that we have copied. So I remember it was underscore status label, I believe. Now we will cross cross verify one more time just to pick at this tab. Um uh, your flow and last run. And from here, just get that. Yeah, this is the one. Okay, I'll just paste it right here. And click on OK. Okay, just check what we have given is correct. Now just save it. And we'll execute the last executed one only. Okay. There's this one and we'll see what value we, we have received in this filter area. See, we have received this value. 
in the pair like string value as well as index position. So we you can use this in further steps. Uh, I'll show you like where and all you can use this value. Uh, if you have used Dataverse and you are well versed with it, you already aware that in Dataverse, when you are doing an update or add a row action and you want these values, okay, this multi-select or the single select choice values in your update or add a row, let's say you're doing an import, you're importing your data from an Excel and storing it into a Dataverse. Now in your import Excel file, you have added choice column values and that needs to sit into your column, which is not a plain text, it's a choice column. So this technique and this trick will help you out, but in the choice column, you need not to provide the string value. Most of the cases you need to provide the stat, uh, string value, uh, integer value, which is your numeric value in this case, this one. So for that sake, you can use your index position. Let's say I'll add on compose just to show you. Uh, you can extract it from that filter array. Come here, you need to do first of the body of the filter array. Okay, and now just specify whether you want this, you're in, interested in string value or you're interested in the numeric value, the index position. Okay, let's say I'm interested in index position. So I'll start it with this because while declaring it in the select, we have specified in this way. So just copy this one and add it in your uh, first of body of your index position. One more compose I'll add and just show you what the string value will get out of it. Again, just do first of body of your filter array. And then this time we'll specify the string value, okay? So just think, type string value, which is nothing but the mapping which we have provided in the select this one okay now just read on the last executed one and in the compose you will get the two compose you will get two uh, values one you will get the numeric value okay in this position cannot be selected array elements cannot be using an integer position unable to process the language or compose cannot be evaluated because the property in it cannot be selected. Okay, we got this. You need to provide it into apply to each because this will have not one value, but it's an array, it will have multiple values. Just add a and select the body, add this compose here. Need to give it again the first stop by of index position. Let's try out whether this works or not. Thank you. Do it the same thing for the string value as well. Give again the error. So no worries, what we will do, we will do list rows, okay? And one by one, we will get the Okay, here while doing this, we will not, we will do an apply to each first. Or if you don't want to do it explicitly, what you do, just select select any value from your list of rows. Let's say and select status. It will automatically go inside the apply to each block. Now what you need to do, the items, okay, one by one items from this apply to each. Okay. 
and select. Uh, we need to run this and get the value which we already have here. Okay, let's get the status, which is giving you a numeric value, not the integer value. Come back here, paste it, click on OK. Okay. In the same place, put this, do this, and push it here. First off, of this, okay, this is fine. We'll save it. Save field, apply to each. If you did I not define template, apply to each two. The name is apply to each two. So just give underscore because whenever you are giving any string, which is having space, replace it with underscore and then update. This time it won't give any error, just save it. Mm -hmm. So it's good if it, if it is giving error and I'm resolving it right in front of you. So it will also help you out when you will get any error. So it will not get worry and you will rectify it on, on your own. Okay. So this time, let's keep our finger crossed. I believe it will run. No, it is giving an error again. Index position cannot be evaluated because the index position cannot be again. Excuse me. In filter array, we are getting all the values in this position for all the 11 items. But here, we are getting unable to process the language. Index position. Why is it so? I got the issue. Okay. So this should be first off the complete filter array. And then do the index position. Okay. After closing both your first as well as your body, you need to do an index position. Like how we did for items of applied to each. After, if you see the item is closed then and there after applied to each, and then we pull out the status code value. So this was the issue. So I think this must be here as well. We close it all together and then fetch the string value. Just run it. Hopefully, this will run now. Keep our finger crossed. Now, yeah, it is successful by this time. And just see in the in the first compose, you will get the index value. You this index value you can use in your add and row, in your update a row action. Because in Dataverse, whenever you are storing any value in your choice column, you need to specify the numeric value, not the string value. And let's say if you are uh, sending any notification and you have to add any action where you need to specify what is the status value, then you can use this technique to get the string value, not the numeric value. I hope this trip and trick help you in solve your problem. And uh, yeah, stay tuned with me for getting such, you know, helpful tips and tricks, which might, you know, give you a tough, uh, which might give you a tough task and eat up most of your time in, you know, figuring out like how to resolve it. So yeah, stay tuned on Power Expertise. Till then, bye, take care. I got the issue. Okay, so this should be first off the complete filter array and then do the